Okay, so <laughs> let's do this one. What's in the middle? Has to be a xenon. Everything's listed after it. And if you have a noble gas, it's going to be in the middle. There's just no other option. All right. So xenon, F, F, and F. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, oh, I almost forgot. I need to get my valence electrons. Xenon is eight plus four. Fluorine's at seven plus an oxygen at six. Well, that's 28 and 14. Is that 42? Yes, it is. 42. So, here we go. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. There's 10 of 42. I got a long ways to go. Uh, 12, 14, 16 of 42. 18, 20, 22 of 42. Uh, 24, 26, 28. 42. Still a long ways to go. Uh, 30, 32, 34 of 42. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 40. And that last one, so I'm at 40 of 42 right now, the last one has to go in the middle. Yeah? Why is it there's like five bonds to xenon? Why is there five bonds to xenon? Mm. Uh, because there's five things around it and there's no other way I could do it. You're, it's extremely rare, it's possible to have a chain of halogens or a chain like halogen and oxygen. It's not. It's pretty rare. And just the way this is written out, xenon and then all the stuff after it. Okay, so it, you, whenever that happens, whatever the, the first element is, you just put it to that? Often the first element is the one in the middle. Okay. How, uh, some examples would be like acids. So HClO3. H is not the one in the middle. H is actually a terminal, but for acids we often write H is in the front. So the chlorine is the one in the middle, and the hydrogen is actually going to be in an oxygen on one of those three oxygens. So if you have an acid, that hydrogen will often be on an oxygen with some rare exceptions. For example, if there is no oxygen. Okay, so how many, uh, th there's a structure, how many groups? Six. Yeah, six groups. So this is? Octahedral. Yeah, yeah, electronic octahedral. Uh, yeah. Oh, if you misspell the name, I don't care. It has to look somewhat similar. If you misspell nomenclature naming, that's a problem. Okay, uh, molecular geometry. There's one lone pair. Square pyramid. Yeah, pyramid. square pyramidal. Pyramid. Yeah, that one. Square. Just remember pyramid. So pyramid al. Okay. Okay, square pyramidal. Now you want to draw it. Um, this is obviously not three-dimensionally draw. So I'm going to redraw it before we can do the polarity. And also, if they ask you to draw something, you should draw it according to its Vesper shape. This is just garbage, how I wrote it up there. OK, so square pyramidal, that means, let me draw the template first. There's a square on the bottom. Imagine that's the base. Coming up from the pyramid is another one. And going down is another one. Now, I'm going to take one of those and make it a lone pair. Okay, so I'll just erase the line. I'll just put a one in the bottom. It doesn't matter where you put it. And now, uh, you kind of want to do this thing of the best structure is going to be the one that puts likes with likes. So notice there are four bonds in the base. And there are four fluorines. There's one odd bond that goes out from the base to make it to the top of the pyramid, and that you want to put the odd element, which is the oxygen. Does that make sense? If there were three that were the same, and you saw three of something, you put them all on there. Okay? This is going to be a big deal on your homework, I think, for some of the polarity questions. So anyways, fluorine, 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 and oxygen. And then I want to put my lone pairs back in. So, so 
So now it should look like a square pyramid. Okay? Like you see, uh, you know, wherever you see a pyramid. So now the next question is polarity. So non-polar. Non-polar. That means it's symmetric. It's polar. Oh, I mean not yeah. or polar. It's, it's polar because there's okay. oxygen here, but not down here, right? So this is polar. That's just symmetry. The other way you could have done it is say there's a lone pair on xenon. And from your first rule of your three general rules, that would also get you polar. So that's polar. Okay. Uh, you'd want to do the bond angles too. What's the bond angle of your octahedral? Yeah, these are 90 degree bond angles everywhere. That's all the kind of stuff, if we had to draw it. This one, you could look for a... Uh, what's it called? Re some resonance structures if you wanted to. It's possible, because uh, there's that oxygen there. Oxygens often give those resonance structures. There's some formal charges that are non-zero here also that we should label. What are your non... Which ones will have non-zero? Oxygen. Oxygen will be what? You're right. Minus one. Minus one. It's six. It should be six. It's seven in the picture, so that's minus one. Oh, it's Xenon. That's already an octave. Minus four. Two. Yeah, minus five. So it's. You got it? What's that? Minus four. Mm -mm. That's crazy minus four. Wow. Positive, minus one. Positive, one. Positive one. There we go. There we go. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh -oh. Should be eight. Remember how to do that? You can use your formula in the book if you prefer that, or you just count what touches it. Okay. Seven should be eight, so it's missing one plus one. And notice this adds up to zero. So even if you're like, well, what the heck is it? You just say, this one plus this one equals zero. So it has to be a positive one, because the overall charge is zero. Could you make a double bond? Yeah, like... nah, exactly. Go in the perfect direction. That's possible. We'll see if it's better. Okay, so somebody who asked me about making resonance structure with bonds. Well, let's try one. I think that one might work. Again, because I see that oxygen, I just have hope. And also... Um, I, I also would like to get zero formal charges everywhere if possible. And so whenever I see something that doesn't have all zeros, but could, then, you know, it gets me anxious. Okay. So I moved one of the lone pairs down to make a double bond with oxygen. That's okay. It definitely breaks the octet, but for, xenon's way down on the table. So it can take a lot of bonds. Is there another lone and, pair on the Oh yeah, that lone pair is still there. So now looking at that, what do you think? Uh, does that work? Does anything have a non-zero formal charge? No. No, this is fantastic, in fact. So, yeah. And this is one of those, that it's octahedral, but because of that oxygen, it still can have a resonance structure. So, oxygens will really do it for you. They'll, Tons of resonance structures all over for oxygen. So this, in fact, they're both resonance structures. If I had to pick the better one, I'd pick the one on the right, because it has non-zero formal charges. But things that have a plus or minus one in their resonance structure are still pretty good resonance structures. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, say, for example, we have one of the fluorines replaced with, say, a chlorine. And chlorine is, uh, um, since it's uh, behind neon, um, how would we know that the oxygen wouldn't be bond, um, bonded to the chlorine as opposed to uh, xenon? Okay, so you have three fluorines and one chlorine. 